but sup everyone so what you're seeing in your screen is a quick video that i generated after playing for the first time with unreal engine 5 and here's the thing there was no light maps used in making this video so as we know those of you that are familiar with uh, unreal engine 4 we traditionally had to set up light maps and bake them in in order to get the global illumination that we all likes right the good shadows the good lighting and stuff and that was a process that was a little bit cumbersome you had to make sure that all your um that everything was uh all your light maps were mapped out correctly with the uv channels the correct uv channels and then you had to uh, bake the lighting a process that could take hours and hours and hours and at the end it might not turn out right so you have to go back and tweak the light map some more and then rebake and that was one of the things that kind of turned me off about Unreal Engine 4, given that most of what uh, I produced was still images in my workflow, which so um, it re wasn't really worth it. Now, with Unreal Engine 5, there's a new engine, a new rendering engine within Unreal Engine 5 called um, Lumen. And with that, uh, what that allows is the um, creation or the simulation of global illumination without having to bake light maps. And this video that you see in front of you was done that way. There's no light mass baking. It was just a straight plug and play from Max over to Unreal to UE5 and um, very minor tweaking of certain settings. And I just rendered it away. I mean, the first time I played with it, played for about an hour and generated this video. So this is really promising. I really like what I see here. And I'm going to show you guys um, the actual source file. I'm going to show you that it's true here. I'm going to stop this video, uh, close out this video. And here I am in UE5. And this is in real time. There's no light maps here. This is the scene where I generated the video from. Uh, as you can see here, we got some nice global illumination, nice shadows, and um, everything done in real time with no light maps. So I'm going to show you guys how to get from um, from Max to this. I'm going to show you the basic steps that you take. Just uh, basically three basic steps. I'm going to break it down for you and then you guys could judge for yourselves and obviously light maps still have their role to play in cases where you have static lighting and you want to save resources uh, lumen is a little bit more intensive on uh, gpu and cpu resources um but uh it, it's great that we have that option now and and i'm going to show you guys how to get from max to this and you can play with it and then judge for yourselves so let's get to it All right, guys, so this is the scene. Just a standard scene with everything rendered as you would on V-Ray. Only difference being that there is no outdoor lighting, no V-Ray sun, no V-Ray HDRI. And I went ahead and deleted the cameras as well. Make sure not to have any flat planes. Unreal does not like that. Go ahead and export. Find the location where you'd like to export your files to. I'm going to create a new folder called house test three and export my files into that new folder. Make sure you select unreal data Smith as the type of format that you'd like to export to. You'll see this box hit okay. And likely you'll get some warnings, which you should be able to likely ignore that related to the UVW maps. All right, so let's go ahead and launch UE5. Once that loads up, make sure you're in the architectural engineering and construction category, select the ArchViz template and select the folder where you'd like to save your project. I'll select the house test three folder, name my project. And if you have a GPU that supports ray tracing, go ahead and check that box. I don't have one, so I'll leave the box blank. Uh, RTX capable cards will give you better quality and performance. And this is the result. As you can see, it's a blank project with a few sample geometry items that I'm gonna go ahead and delete. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these notes here, which I don't need. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the sample geometry. And what's left is a blank project with a few items that I can use, such as the post-processing volume and the sun and sky. Now let's go ahead and import the Datasmith constant. So select content, Datasmith, Find your Datasmith file that you had exported and go ahead and open that up. Select OK. I will uncheck animation since I don't need that. Leave everything else checked and import that. And 
Here's the result. The files have imported successfully. We see the house test three datasmith object there. Once we zoom in a bit to inspect the objects, we see that it's a little bit bright, a little bit overexposed. And that is because we need to delete the global exposure item, which has also imported with datasmith from V-Ray. Once you delete that, everything should be okay. As you could tell, now that we've deleted the global exposure, we return to Unreal's standard auto exposure. And here's the room. Now let's go ahead and make sure that the settings or the engine is set to Lumen. Go to project settings, scroll down till you see the rendering category or the rendering tab. Scroll down till you see the global illumination method and make sure it's set to Lumen as well as the reflection method. Also, if you have a post-processing volume, go ahead and select that and make sure that the rendering engine is set to Lumen as well. Now I will select all my lights and make sure they're set to movable. I do not want any static lighting since I'm using the Lumen engine and we are not doing any light maps. So I select all my ceiling lights that were imported along with Datasmith and set them to movable. I will also change my floor lamps to movable as well. Now let's go ahead and create some sphere reflection capture items for the reflections. This is a standard procedure as we would do before. I will put one here. And I'll put another one right around there. Now, sometimes when importing glass from V-Ray, this happens where you get the glass reflecting in on itself. Some weird reflections and refractions there. And the way to fix this is to change the materials refraction mode. So we're going to go onto the material of the glass, search for it bring the screen and I will go into the parent material, the main glass material. Scroll down till you find refraction mode and change from index of refraction to pixel normal offset. Apply and save and now it is fixed. Now Let's play with the angle of the sun. Let's look for the sun sky system and you'll see various settings that you could tweak to change the time and the location of the sun. And lastly, we will tweak some of the post process effects. So select the post process volume. And there you will see various effects that you could tweak to your liking. I will play a little bit with the white balance temperature. I'll play a little bit with the lens flare, a little bit too much. I'll put it back where it was. Let's tweak the exposure a bit, make it a tad bit brighter. And one more thing you could do if you're using the Lumen engine is tweak the quality of the GI. So under the global illumination tab, you'll see an option for final gathering quality. Raising this number will increase the quality of the global illumination produced by Lumen at the cost of frame rate. So Play with this at your risk. The higher the number, the higher the quality, but it will take a toll on performance. I put it here at 10, and as you can see, quality is quite good. And here's the result. Nice GI, nice shadows, no light maps. I find this to be pretty impressive 
especially for the fact that it's being rendered in real time. With just a few clicks, we brought the scene over from V-Ray, and here it is. So overall, I'm very impressed, guys. I like the technology. Going forward, I think I'll use it more. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. And as usual, stick around. Let me know if you have any questions. And thank you guys so much for watching.